Some 37 million people worldwide are currently infected with HIV. Dr. Evan Lyon is a lecturer of health and human rights at the University of Chicago. He's on the line from there now. Welcome to the program. I just want to go into this in a bit more detail. Why is it not a cure? Why do they have to say he's only been cleared or is free of HIV? Well, I, I, I understand in this circumstance, it's not being described as a cure because it's so new, right? This is the second person in the world um, inside of an epidemic that's claimed tens of millions and currently with 37 million people living with HIV. This is such new territory that we cannot be certain until some years progress. It's very promising and, you know, from the scientific report, it seems very likely that this single individual is cured. But the appropriate thing is to speak of remission until more time has passed and we understand better for this uh, London patient. So in theory, his HIV could return. We just don't know. Is that right? We just don't know. It's so new. And again, you know, these two patients now are very exciting for the progress of understanding of the basic biology of HIV and immunology, where all of the advances in HIV care have come from. I think it's an exciting step in that prospect, adding to the body of knowledge about the disease in general. But for this uh, particular patient, there's still some uncertainty. Do you know how this London patient's case is different or in any way similar, I don't know, from the, well, Ber the Berlin case, which is the other one? Right. It seems very similar. And I think most important to, to pause on in this, uh, in this episode is the fact that both of these patients seem to have been cured from bone marrow transplant treatment for something else. And this is, uh, in a sense, a happy accident. Uh, treating for another life-threatening problem has led to uh, perhaps cure for their HIV disease. Um, in terms of thinking about the epidemic worldwide, Bone marrow transplant is not an answer. It's a very dangerous, very expensive, and very toxic form of treatment when, in fact, we have very safe, very simple, and effective medicines that can control the disease and give people a normal lifespan, even mm -hmm. if infected at a young age. People expect to live into their 70s and 80s and beyond. Right. So can you, in very simple layman's terms, tell us how they do this? I mean, where do the stem cells come from and where do they go in the patient's body? Sure. Um, for a patient like this struggling with uh, cancer or leukemia, um, if other approaches, chemotherapy and radiation, are not if sufficient, essentially that person's immune system is completely wiped out and it's replaced with a transplant from someone else's immune system. So the person's natural immune immunity, white blood cell counts, etc., are knocked out, which creates a great vulnerability to illness and dying, right. and then replaced with uh, cells from another person um, as those take hold and grow, replacing the immune system. In this case, it included a rare, uh, a rare capacity in those transplanted white blood cells that provides um, uh, immunity to HIV. And is his cancer cured as well? Do you happen to know? That's my understanding from the press. I'm reading like the rest of you uh, from the uh, popular press waiting for the scientific report in Nature to come out in the next few days. Do you think this is an Alexander Fleming penicillin moment? moment? Um, I don't, frankly. I don't. Although um, elimination of HIV on a much broader and much more important scale is happening and potential and in ways that are to me much more exciting as a public health doctor and someone who thinks about this on the scale of international uh, treatment and and even frankly from the human rights perspective. We have to leave it there Evan because I've asked you so many questions we've run out of time but I think it was very interesting this is one of the great stories of the day thank you very much thank you. Thank you. That's Dr. Evan Lyon Chicago.